striking me in that last song we sang was the words, it's your breath in my lungs. And just contrasting that with the other line, all the earth will shout your praise. It's your breath in my lungs. All the earth shall shout your praise. And um, there's a connect between the two. We're looking, as you know, at the series uh, Growth Plus, we're calling it. Uh, a few weeks ago, we looked at going to God in prayer. Uh, then we looked at reading God's word. Uh, Tony looked last week at obeying and serving. And today we are coming to witness. <coughs> And uh, witness is an interesting word, really. I think a lot of Christians are quite scared about the word. Uh, it obviously has some connotations with JWs and Jehovah's Witnesses, which is obviously not. Uh, we're witnesses of Jesus Christ. And uh, so what is a, what is a witness? Uh, well, a witness is a person who personally or sees or experiences an event happening. That's a, that what makes a witness. So anything you've seen or experienced, you have a witness to it. Now, it could be that you've witnessed something and there's a call up to court uh, and you act as a witness at that, or you could decline to do so as well. You could just hide away and pretend you never knew anything about it. There's those opportunities to us as to whether we uh, confess, if you like, to what we've witnessed or we don't. The crucial thing is, uh, is that we've witnessed it. Uh, and Jesus, of course, says that we are to be his witnesses. He will make us his witnesses. So let's first just set the scene. I just want to set the scene. What is it that you have witnessed? So I, I hope and trust and pray that for each of us, we've witnessed what I'm about to summarise here. The first thing is, is God. It all begins with God. The Bible begins, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. It's all about God. And God, of course, created the heavens and the earth, and he made the earth, and they were sort of one with him. There was that unity. But then what we read, as we know full well, as we come to Genesis 3, is that sin enters the world and separates the world from God. And there's great separation between us and God. And ultimately, that is the biggest problem that this world faces in every dimension. Every dimension. But God continued to love and to care for us, his human beings, and for his world. And so what did he do? You know this. He sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for each one of us. To take away our sin, and in so doing, to build this bridge that enables us to come back to God. And so the big question this morning is, are you... A witness of that. Have you seen that and experienced that for yourself? Have you crossed back that bridge of the cross to God today? Have you had it in the past? Because you see, Jesus Christ came specifically, the only reason Jesus came was to seek and to save the lost. That's what he came to do. He came to seek and to save us. And right now, if you've experienced that, you are a witness, and Jesus now sends us as witnesses of this truth, because we've experienced it personally. And he uses a variety of images. The first is this, is fishing. He says, I will make you fishers of men. Let's just think about that analogy for a moment. Fishing has that element of it's casting out a net. They go out. It's not. It's, it's not the old type of you know, or the type today of you know single fisherman sitting by a river and casting a line sort of thing. This is about actually in those days was as casting a net out from the boat. So there's an element of going out to do it. When you get out there, it's a team effort, and you're casting out this net. And you don't know quite where the fish are. You might catch some, you might not. You might get huge quantities, you might just get a few. But there's this sense of you, you kind of taking a bit of a flyer at it and seeing what comes. That's fishing. The second thing he says is about you will bear much fruit. If you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. And there's an element of that about our character, but I'm convinced too it's also talking about us bearing fruit in this world in a sense of more disciples following Jesus Christ. 
And this carries a metaphor of actually Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, and as we remain in the vine, we bear much fruit. And so there's this kind of just a natural occurrence. It's not something that the branch strives at going, oh, I must bear some fruit. No, all it does is just remain in the vine and some fruit comes out. And so it is for us, there's that element of us witnessing too. Actually, as we remain in Jesus Christ, we bear much fruit. Here's another image of the harvest. Jesus says the fields are ripe to harvest. Pray therefore that the Father will send out labourers into the harvest field. There's a sense of it, there's, there's already a ripeness out there. There's already people who are ready to follow Jesus Christ. All it needs is a bit of labour, a bit of hard work, a bit of us going out there, a bit of us getting on with it. That's what's required. That's another image of what Jesus raises. And then there's this one which we're focusing, I guess, on today uh, in terms of its title, which is about the witness. And there's that, that sense where someone becomes a witness where they actually put their name to it and say, this is what I have seen and what I have experienced. This is what has happened. This is the truth. So there's those different images, and I think each of them are helpful in different situations and as we think about what it means uh, to witness. I was, uh, as I was just, you, you, you know that, because um, I said when we were talking about reading the Bible, at the moment I'm just reflecting on different verses uh, in the scriptures, and I'm, I'm working through Peter at the moment actually, and uh, yesterday, as I was doing so, these were a couple of verses that struck me. 2 Peter 3 verse 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. It's talking about the second coming of Christ. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. <clears throat> he wants everyone to come to repentance. And he is waiting, he's not coming again until that full number have come in. Those that he's calling. And here's the next interesting thing, verse 11. Uh, what kind of lives ought you to live? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. Now here's what went through my mind. I was just thinking about, you know, think about what are the problems in this world? What are the things which upset you in this world? Do you get frustrated and upset about the war in Ukraine? Do you get upset and frustrated about famines in Africa? Do you get upset and about, frustrated about people who are really greedy and have loads of money and when there's others who have nothing? Do you get upset when you see that the, the police are abusing the people that they ought to be protecting? Do you get upset about when, when you just see simple injustice in your workplace and what's going on? You're right to do so. And the thing is this, is what, you know, this, is, this is the really good news, okay? This is the really good news, okay? This is what the hope that greets Jesus Christ has given to us. Because there is a day coming when these things will be no more. And it's the day when Jesus Christ comes again. It's the day when Jesus Christ comes again and he's bringing in his new kingdom. And there will be no more injustice, no more famine, no more war. Jesus explicitly says that. And here's the thing, what I read in 2 Peter. It's we have the capacity to speed the day of Jesus is coming. Did you realise that? How are you going to do it? Well, Jesus, God is waiting for everyone to come in. So actually, if you want to solve the problems of the famine and the wars and everything else, which Jesus says will carry on until he comes again, actually, we want to get Jesus to come again quicker, which actually means we need to tell the gospel to people, share the gospel with people. It is, well, I'm just going to simply say, it's the highest priority. It's the way to solve the world's problems. Jesus is the answer. Do you believe that? Yeah. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's true. Okay? It's true. And it's worth living your life in line with what is true. It's definitely worth it. So, the big question is this, okay? This is unbelievably important. This is the solution to the world's problems. 
The question is how? Yeah, and we're kind of, well, how do I go about this? It's such a big thing. What am I going to do? Well, we need to build bridges. We need to build bridges uh, back to God. And the first thing I want to highlight is this. It's all about the cross. It's all about the cross of Christ. And the first thing I want to highlight is this. It's actually about love. Because when we look at Jesus, as he heads towards the cross, he exhibits love. He has compassion on people. Numerous times in the Gospels, and in particular in Matthew 9, verse 36, he had compassion on them, for they were with sheep without the shepherd. He has compassion on the blind. He has compassion on the lame. He has compassion on all sorts of different people, those who've lost family members. He has compassion on them. He cares for them. Now, that means that he spends time with them. He seeks to help them. He seeks to meet them where they're at. This is our Lord Jesus Christ, and he calls us to do the same. If we love people, we will spend time with people. We'll spend time caring for them, and we will sacrifice us, ourselves for them. There's a time when Jesus goes off for a rest with the disciples. He needs a bit of refreshment. He's worn out. He was human, just like you and I. And we read that the disciples come to him, and he has compassion on them, and he continues to teach them all day and heal them. So it starts with love. Secondly, is listen. Listen. It's interesting how Jesus says to people, uh, what is it you want? What do you want? He says it a number of times. What do you want? One of the things Andrea highlighted when she was just sharing a bit of her, her experience in terms of witnessing is, it's about where are people at? Listen to people. Witnessing is not just about speaking, it's about listening. And there's different ways of doing that. Some it's about, it's about asking questions. Some it's about just dropping little things in and seeing what people say about it. Might be, you know, what do you think of Jesus? What do you know about Jesus? Or uh, if God could do something, what would you, what would you want him to do? It just allows people to open out a little bit with a view that we could share. It's building bridges with people. And then thirdly, I'm going to say is learning. It's interesting that at one time, Jesus says, what do the scriptures say? When he's asked the question, what do the scriptures say? And I do think there's this element of, it's not about us lecturing people. It's actually about learning together and going to God. What does God say? What does God say? I know for a while I'm often inclined to just try and answer a question. And actually, I think, actually, I need to point people to Jesus. What does Jesus say about this? Let's look together at the scriptures. Uh, and one of the ways of doing that, you'll see on your, on your, on your sheets, uh, on a number of the seats, most rows have got at least one example of the four spiritual laws, which we've uh, gone through before a couple of times. Uh, in church, Tony's taken us through the four spiritual laws. You can use something like that. There's also on your tables, there, on your uh, chairs, there's more of the little four points, these little leaflets. Uh, these little things here, these little cards, basically cover exactly the same thing, four points. Uh, there's little symbols associated with them, of uh, a heart and a cross, part of God's love, cross of God's of sin, uh, cross of God's uh, giving the sacrifice for us, and then the question mark is the choice as to what way am I going to go from here. So there's those sort of examples. There's various little things you can use, little tools. Um, you can memorise things. You can just have a, a, a copy of something with you, a little booklet like that with you, with a view that you can just talk with people if you don't feel confident to talk uh, and to say things yourself. So it's about learning together. Uh, and it's about interacting with people. Like, as I say, it's not about lecturing, but at the same time, we're listening to people. What, where are people at? What are people thinking? And then fourthly is this element of Lord. It's the Lord. Actually, ultimately, we're submitting to God. And it's about others' submission to the Lord as well. As Jesus says, come, follow me. This isn't about something theoretical. It's not just about what you academically think. This is actually about who you are going to follow. We're looking for a response that they also might be fishers of men. So you get some of that in the, in the uh, little booklets uh, that you've got there, uh, which you're welcome to use, and we can order more. Now... That's a little bit how. We could talk a lot more about how, and I'd love to do a bit more of that with you. But what I want to think about is why not? Why don't we witness? Why don't we share the goodness of God with people? 
And what we find is there's walls come up which keep us from doing just that. In fact, we've, had, we've got the experience of the cross in our lives. We can see the walls just hidden, Christ's cross. And somehow it becomes hard for us to share about Jesus with people. Here's a few things. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's fear about, well, someone might respond negatively. I might put somebody off. People might look down on me. There's all sorts of things we can be afraid of. <coughs> Maybe you feel inadequate. Maybe you look at some others in their church fellowship who are, seem to be so expert in all this and have a particular gift in this area. And actually find, oh, I can't keep up with that. And so it's not even any point in me trying. But actually God calls us all to be witnesses. Yes, he gifts us differently, but we're all called to be a witness and to play our part in that. Maybe you feel ignorant in this thing. I don't know enough. I need to know more before I can do it. But actually, Jesus doesn't say you need to know it all before you can witness. He says, receive the Holy Spirit and you will be my witness. Apathy. We can end up with our focus just on other things and actually, oh, it doesn't really matter too much. Actually, that's why I started where I started. This is so important what we're talking about here. We're talking about people who are lost, so lost that Jesus Christ came to die for them. Another is introspection. It's just we become looking in on ourselves rather than looking out to the cares <coughs> and needs of the people around us. And lastly, just simple business. So easy in our modern world, isn't it? It's just to have so many things going on that we just never get around to it. And on, your, on the chairs, on some of the chairs, there's a little book which is called this. <coughs> Overcoming Walls to Witnessing. It was originally written uh, with, by Billy Graham uh, back in the 70s and it's been updated by a guy, Timothy, I'm not sure how to pronounce the surname, um, Burger or something like that. Um, so I encourage you to have a look at that and he picks up on each of those issues I've just highlighted on that wall. But here's what I want to say this morning, is in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 7 and 8, this is what Paul writes to Timothy, he says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. He gave you a spirit of power, a spirit of capability, a spirit which can do which annihilates some of those things which might be written on our wall. He gave us a spirit of love which overcomes apathy. He gives us a spirit of love towards people, a spirit of compassion towards people. And he gives us a spirit of self-discipline. Some translations say a sound mind. The important element of the word there is that we're thinking straight, and that thinking straight is exercised in how we live our daily lives. And so he says, this is what it follows on with, do not be ashamed to testify about our <coughs> Lord. You see, this ties in exactly with what Jesus says in Acts 1 verse 8, where he says, The Spirit will come upon you, and you have power to be my witnesses throughout the world. You and I need the Spirit of God. Now, I encourage you to read that book about overcoming wars to witnessing, if there's issues you struggle with. But here's what we ultimately need. We, you know, there's that song we sing, isn't there? Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. And that's precisely what the Holy Spirit does. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. As the Holy Spirit comes, he takes that wall down and brings us freedom. Freedom to do God's will in our lives. He brings that power and that capability he brings that love, and he brings that self-discipline. And it does sometimes. We have to put things in the diary or set clear spots. We have to be, decide this is what we are going to do. And what we'll find is this whole series is about maturing, about developing in Christ, going for spiritual maturity, is actually what will happen as you do so, is you'll find you will mature. Why? Because you're doing what Christ has called you to. You're stepping out 
with steps of faith. You're taking risks for the kingdom of God. And that's going to lead to your own maturity. It's no good just receiving from God. Well, it's actually it's more of a concept of a river where things flow out through us into the world around us. And then secondly, the fruit is their spiritual life. Now, not everybody you witness to is going to come to faith. Jesus told the parable of the sower. He said, you know, scatter the seed. Something's going to fall on the path and it's just completely ignored. People don't want to know. That's fine. Still scatter the seed. Something's going to fall on soil where uh, it's stony. And it seems to be a shoot. And we're all excited. Wow, oh, something seems to be happening here. And then it kind of just wilts in the sunshine and fades away. Others falls on soil where thistles and things grow up, where there's all the concerns of this world, and suddenly the issues of this world crowd in, and it crowds out the growth of that spiritual reality. And it's so frustrating when we see that. But there's also the seed that falls on good soil, that produces a crop that's 30, 60, or even 100 times what was said. And this is the thing. I don't know, and you don't know, what the impact's going to be of the seeds we sow. That one you sow tomorrow might just be that hundred folder. You don't know, but it's definitely worth trying it and see it. There's all sorts of ways to follow through from that. It's in your workplace, it's in your family, it's in your neighbourhood. There's proactive things you could do. You need to get to see people, spend time with people, eat with people. Um, that's what I find is often, you know, you need to just have that bit of time, spend with someone to chat with someone, uh, rather than the rush of business. That's partly why, in all honesty, I've, I've stopped doing the, um, all the bookings for Amazon House, because it just ended up, it was just crazily busy. Uh, I'd sort of hoped to get, I did get to know people, but the actual opportunities for witnessing, it was just too busy to do that, really. Uh, so I need a bit of space in order to do that. One of the things I've picked up, in the last uh, few months is joining with the Telford Evangelism Hub. You're welcome to join with that if you want to. Um, uh, they meet once a month on a Wednesday evening uh, to, for teaching in evangelism and then on the same Saturday, the following Saturday, we're out on Wellington Square just sharing with people. A couple of weeks ago I took the view that what I do is I just simply say good morning to people and see who responded. Uh, it's quite interesting the different responses. People aren't used to being to say good morning uh, in Wellington Square. Uh, some people kind of look really quizzical, some people just zoom by, some people stop and chat. There was a, a lady that I and another were talking to, and um, she was telling us all sorts of issues and problems, and then we, uh, I, I, I just said to her, I, I try to follow the sort of points that we've got in there, I always try to follow through, with God's love, we've sinned, Christ died for you, etc. Yeah, you need to make a choice, let's try to do it. And as she shared about all these problems, I just said to her, I said, you know, God loves you, he's made you and he's got a plan and a purpose for you with that she just put her hand on my shoulder and she said you don't know how much that means to me today hmm. I had a clue before but you know you, I don't know what God wants to do through you tomorrow tomorrow I don't know you don't know but it's worth going for it because that yeah you know, when you see God at work it sticks with you and gives you a joy in your heart so may the Lord bless you, may the Lord enable you, may the Lord equip you, may you know that spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline working through you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.